morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this steamy August day. I still am not over the fact that it's August or any of you. No, not at all. A um, few announcements. Good to have you all here. Good to have those who are worshiping with us online. Thank you for joining us. A few uh, announcements, looking ahead a little bit. Um, August 15th will be our outside SOS um, evening uh, youth-led worship. Uh, it's a brief um, gathering with songs and a little bit of a skit and a message, and our youth participate in leading that. So it's outside in the parking lot, August 15th at 5 p.m., and always on the third Sunday of the month, so please mark your calendar for that. Uh, coming up um, also then in two weeks is our Duratio parking lot party. Uh, we're going to partner up with Holy Redeemer for that event, uh, inviting the neighborhood and the community to join us. It will be at their parking lot, uh, their location. And uh, we're thankful for them. They were our partners in a lot of ways through the Duray Show, giving us a home for live streaming our worship and working together in ministry in the community with Edwin Forrest. And so we are happy to be marking that milestone with them. I think you can check out the rest of the announcements um, looking ahead. We are, are already still collecting for the Lutheran World Relief School kits, and we're collecting those items. So take note of what those are. I think the sales have started for the back to school items, so now's a good time to pick those up. And our quilters have been very busy tying quilts for all of you too, so thank you to them for their work this past week. They were here twice this past week working hard on the quilts. I invite you then to take a deep breath, center our hearts for worship, and we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. It is hard to believe as not to share. We trust in your ways and we differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We determine to our own understanding rather than the process we can do. We take our minds to the teachings and the ways. Curse the end to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us to the life of the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Continue uh, this Sunday with our bread theme. It's been going on for a few weeks, so you notice our hymns. Uh, center around that theme as well as the scriptures.
praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Gracious Father, your blessed Son, be down in heaven, to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that we may live in us and be in him, and that strengthened by this too, we may live with us his body in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to John, the fifth chapter. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. And truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. It is enough now, Lord. In fact, it's more than enough. It's too much. We thought we were seeing the light at the end of the long, dark tunnel of the pandemic. But the COVID cases caused by the Delta variant keep increasing. The hotspots are spreading. The healthcare systems in many cities are becoming overburdened once again. There's still good news that the vaccine is preventing fatality, but we're also learning that the vaccinated can spread the variant like unknowing asymptomatic people did before the vaccine. It's discouraging. And we're tired of being honest about how hard it is. And at the same time, we're tired of pretending to be cheerful too. Perhaps we can take a page out of Elijah's playbook curl up under a tree, and give up. Oh, but wait, there are hardly any trees to curl up under anymore. All those trees uprooted almost one year ago in the duration. Speaking of being tired of things, tired of back order of siding and the rising costs of lumber and the shortage of labor and trying to find an honest contractor, let alone one that will call you back. We're tired of talking to our insurance companies. Elijah's despair hits really close to home. And it's not just those things, but it's everything. All of our daily lives don't stop happening. All the struggles of everyday life don't stop occurring just because other things are hard. So Elijah is despairing. And despite his recent victory over the prophets of the false idol Baal, he's having a tough time, because now Queen Jezebel has a bounty on his head. So he's wondering what's it all for, this work that God called him to do. He feels like he's the last prophet on earth, and that the burden is too much. He's weary. He's beyond weary. He's done. He wants to die. So he finds a comforting, shady oasis under the broom tree, and he escapes into sleep. God sees and hears Elijah, and God sends an angel to watch over him in his exhaustion. And the angel rouses Elijah from his sleep and says, get up and eat. Elijah looks around, and there is bread and water for him. And he eats and he drinks. And he goes back to sleep. And once again, after a time, the angel returns with that same reminder, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. Eating, drinking, and resting. A sign of life. At the end of his rope, at the end of his hope, Elijah had to stop and be renewed. 
And we're told that with this new strength that he received from that bread and water and rest, he was able to travel 40 days and nights all the way to Mount Horeb. God heard Elijah. God gave him strength for the journey. Strength for the journey comes to us on two levels. Real food, real water, real rest. We need it. In our times of being overwhelmed, we can forget the basics. We can push them aside, but that's when we need them the most. That's when we need someone to touch us on the shoulder and say, take a break, grab some lunch, regroup. But then on the other level, we hunger for more than the basics. We hunger for resilience that's fueled by hope and a promise that we matter to God. And our work and our service <coughs> mean something, and our lives do make a difference. <coughs> Buried in struggles, we often dig in deeper, and we long for an escape, like Elijah longed for death. But God doesn't provide an escape. God provides life. It's a resurrection story, really. Get up, eat, drink, journey on, journey through. <coughs> Well, that's what sticks out to me immediately in this next slice of the bread of life today in John's Gospel. Jesus says, No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. Like the yeast that makes dough rise, the bread of life, Jesus promises that those who are drawn to him through the Father will be raised up. Resurrection. Get up. Eat the bread journey on, journey through. See the crowd, the folks following Jesus? They've been huddled, huddled <coughs> under a broom tree. They feel like the oppression of Rome, of poverty, of illness, wanting an escape. And here was Jesus tapping them on the shoulder and offering them this bread to eat. First it was actual bread and fish. You remember that day when he fed thousands with a young boy's lunch. <coughs> The basics, daily bread. <clears throat> and they were willing to eat it, anxious to eat it, hungering for it, so much so that they followed him looking for more. And Jesus is there to offer more. Only not more of the same, but more as in something beyond a fish sandwich. And as they listen, they begin to pick that up. That's something more. His words about bread of life, bread that saves, bread that brings eternal life, bread from heaven. And they say, yes, Jesus, give us this bread always, but then all of a sudden, it changes. The crowd starts to hear the underlying message of his words. The something more Jesus is offering is really Jesus himself. <laughs> And when it sinks in that he's serious about what he's saying, that he is the bread of life, the bread from heaven, they begin to complain. And it sounded so special, this bread, so meaningful, this life-giving bread that would mean the end of their hunger, until he said it was him. It's time for a reality check. I mean, this is Jesus. This is the son of Joseph. They know him. They know his parents. He's not from heaven. He's from down the block. The signs and the mysterious promises of God were all well and good, but this guy is still just Jesus from Nazareth. Jesus, you're a good prophet, a rabbi, a teacher, a healer even. You put together a tasty fish sandwich, but let's draw the line somewhere. You call yourself the I Am. You, the bread that comes down from heaven. You, sent by the Father. Your flesh is the bread that you offer for the life of world. And I wonder if we were to have been there with Elijah when the angel woke him and told him to eat. <clears throat> what was he really thinking? Did he want that bread and water? Did he really believe it was going to help or even make a difference given all the trouble he was in? Fearing for his life and at the same time in so much despair, calling on God for his life to end. Bread and water, that was God's answer to his problems? And perhaps not believing it would help at all, Elijah still ate and drank. And that bread and that water did carry him 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb. 
It gave him strength for the journey. It got him up. It raised him up. It resurrected him. So back to the crowd. Back to Jesus. The guy from down the block. The son of Joseph. This guy is what they're supposed to believe is God's answer to their problems. He says he's the bread of life from heaven. Sent from God as their food for the journey to raise them up to eternal life. Resurrection. It's all a little hard to swallow. And they find themselves choking on this bread that is something more. Coughing, sputtering, complaining. The 40-day journey wasn't the end of Elijah's story. There's much more to Elijah's story after he reaches Mount Horeb. And we know there is yet much more to Jesus' story, too. More than these crowds can know or believe in this moment. More like he will raise Lazarus up. More about what it means that the bread Jesus gives is his flesh dying on a cross. More that he will be raised up himself on the third day. Resurrection. Something more than death. Bread for the journey. Real bread. Food. Nutrition. And something more. And we come to worship. And here's the plate of bread and a cup of wine. And we're told to get up and eat. And maybe from under our broom tree we think, really, Lord? With all that we're facing, with all we don't want to face or believe we can't face, this is your answer? This is your offer? This is what is supposed to feed us and heal us and cleanse us and save us? And Jesus says, the bread is from heaven, and it's me. It's my flesh, my blood, my life for you and for the world. And maybe some days it is hard to swallow that that bread is from heaven. Because we know that that bread comes from Haimi, from down the block. And, and then there's this thing. I mean, what is it really? A crouton? Thanks be to God that we don't know, we don't come to Jesus about what we think we know. Thanks be to God, we don't come to eternal life by what we think we know. We come by grace through faith. And we're drawn in by the Father. And then we're tapped by the Spirit on the shoulder. And we're reminded to come forth and eat and drink. Elijah knew Queen Jezebel. He knew about the death of so many prophets before him by her command. And Elijah wanted to die under a broom tree. But God sent an angel to say, get up and eat. There's more. And this crowd from Jesus, they, they knew him. They knew he'd done a few miracles. They'd heard his inspiring teachings. They know he's just Joseph's son. But later on, many in the crowd will shout, crucify him, and his own disciples will flee and deny and betray him. And then God will send an angel to roll away the stone and to tell the disciples that the bread of life has risen and there is more. Not more of the same, but something new, something to hope in, something that matters for you, for me, for the whole world. It's life, eternal life, abundant life. So despite what we think we know about that weird little cube of bread that we peel back the seal, and then by grace through faith, we eat. Because in eating, we have strength for the journey. And then despite what we know about the world, despite what we know about ourselves, we get up and we go out, fed by that bread of life and sent to be the bread of life for others. Sent from God, just you and me from down the block, us, but still the body, the flesh of Christ. Offering daily bread and something more, the bread of life, the bread from heaven, the Son of God, Jesus.
with the whole church, we join together in confessing our faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our lives. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Jesus, bread of life, we give you thanks that you offer yourself as bread for our journey. Continue to sustain us and nourish us. Be our strength and our hope. See us through from death into life and help us to help others carry on. Lord, in your mercy. For the health and well-being of creation, for shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun, for all the new trees that have been planted since the duration, for all the trees threatened by wildfire, Lord, in your mercy. For those called to positions of authority in our legal systems, for judges, lawyers, law clerks, court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For all those who are incarcerated, Lord, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future. For all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick, for all for whom prayer has been requested on our Gloria Day prayer chain, and for all those we need before you now, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. We trust and hope in your promise to raise up all who place their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do you take your communion? Have you peel back to reveal the piece of bread. Know that it is the bread of life that you receive. It is the body of Christ given for you.
But as you do the same with the wine or the juice, peeling back the cover, receiving and drinking, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to have some help being led through this final hymn. Thank you to Cheryl and Char for helping to lead us. And it is our job then to join in uh, heartily on the refrain. 